Hi, my name is Landry Facchinetti and let's write some code together, shall we? What we have on the menu today is a follow-up to a series of streams in which I am developing an app. It's a desktop app. It is written in JavaScript using Electron and it allows you to draw on top of your computer screen, which is useful if you are doing live streams, if you are doing a Zoom presentation, uh, if you are an educator and you are teaching online, that sort of thing. You want to explain things that are on your screen and you want to be able to draw diagrams or use a highlighter like this. And um, at this point in the app, most of these menu features are working. You can switch colors, you can switch stroke widths, you can switch to different tools. You, you, there is even this mode that when you draw and you let go of the mouse, the, the drawing the line that you drew goes away. And there is this mode of operation in which you are not actually drawing, you are interacting with the application under underneath, which is useful if um, you are doing something like you're drawing a diagram on the side and you're writing some code and you want to refer to the diagram so it's nice to have it on the screen. And then this button just uh, disables the whole thing and we have a menu bar thing going on here that allows you to bring the, the app back on. And last time, which I think was last Monday, if I remember correctly, uh, what we did was to fix uh, the keyboard shortcuts. They were not working. So we fixed some of them, but not all of them. And the issue with the keyboard shortcuts is that the keyboard shortcuts are essential to that. I really want people to learn the keyboard shortcuts and not have the menu on the screen. That gives you the most transparent um, presentation for people who are watching. They just see you interacting with an app and then drawing on top of your screen and then interacting back with the app. So it's really nice for people to learn the keyboard shortcuts. And I'm designing the whole thing to be operated with the keyboard. Now, the problem is that I have two windows in the app. One is the drawing window. It's a transparent window that covers your whole screen. And the other window is this menu. And they have to be separate windows because of this feature that allows you to interact with the application underneath. Um, I can make a whole window click through, but it's very hard in Electrum to make part of a window click through. So instead of having a window that is part, partly click through, uh, what I have is a window that is completely click through in this case, and then another window which is completely not click through, which is the menu. Now, the problem is that in order to make the custom cursor, this cross hair thing that you see on the screen, for that to work, the custom cursor to work, I have to have the focus on the drawing window. But then the keyboard events, when I am drawing, the keyboard events go to the drawing window but the changes to the menu must happen on the menu window. So I need to capture the mouse events or the keyboard events and forward them into the menu window, which will then capture the mouse, the, <laughs> the keyboard event and will update the menu accordingly. Now, I was thinking that maybe the way we would do this was to literally capture the keyboard event on the drawing window and then forward that to the menu. But on the last stream, we learned that there is another way of doing it. We were reading the Electron Docs for unrelated reasons, really, but we found this piece of information that has to do with accelerators. So accelerators are this, uh, for instance, if I'm closing the app, for instance, here in Visual Studio Code, um, this keyboard shortcut is called an accelerator for this menu option. And in our app, we don't really have a menu over here. You can see that when I start the app, um, a menu up here doesn't change. There is a new icon. It's a menu bar icon, but it doesn't show up here. It doesn't show up here either. It doesn't show up here when I command tab. The app is just completely transparent. It is just a menu bar thing. And that's exactly what I want. So I don't really have a menu. What I can do is just use the accelerators under the hood and it will look like I have keyboard shortcuts 
and they are not keyboard shortcuts like the ones you saw here on the uh, Visual Studio Code menu that are like Command A or something. No, the keyboard shortcuts are just numbers on the keyboard and uh, letters on the keyboard, and that helps uh, people who are like drawing with their right hand. They have their left hand just on top of the keyboard, and they can switch to different colors. They can switch to different stro stroke widths and so forth. So we are using the accelerators to do the keyboard capture, and then we forward that event into the menu. So we are cutting a middleman here. And, and so by cutting the middleman, what I mean is we would have a drawing window sending an event to the main electron process, forwarding the event to the menu. But now we learned about this accelerator stuff. So we can cut this guy and let the electron app directly capture the mouse events and then send the events to the menu window, which will react to the event. So we started that last Monday and we are going to continue doing that today. But I was also playing with the app a couple minutes before the stream started. And I, I realized that there are other things I want to do. And I even realized one just right now as I was playing with the app. So the thing that I realized right now is that the maybe there is a to do for this already in the code but i'm going to take note of this anyway so the cur custom cursor is behind the drawing i think there is a to do for this in the code and i think i know what the issue is there after the stream in which i implemented the custom cursor i think i, I was thinking about the issue we were having and why the custom cursor was behind the drawing and why I couldn't make it above the drawing or the drawing would not work. I think I know the solution. So maybe we'll do that today. We'll see. But then I was just thinking about all these other things. So we need to fix the keyboard shortcuts. Right now we know that this strategy I just explained will work and we only implemented that for the, the color changes. So if I try to hit Q to change the stroke width, that doesn't work. So uh, fi fix the rest of the uh, keyboard shortcuts and i think it would be nice for the menu to have some headings because it's all, um, initially just the colors and the icons i think we're good enough but right now we have so many icons and i think we'll have more of them i know we'll have more of them so it's getting out of hand and what do these icons even mean you have to try them out to really understand so i think that we need some section headings here and then I think we also need some more buttons here to quit the app directly from here. The way you can quit the app right now is like I am doing. I'm hitting Control C on the terminal, but in the app, what you can do is close this, but this keeps the app running and you can go to the menu bar and then quit the app. I think it would be nice to have some option in the menu directly to just uh, a quit button right here. And then another one to hide the menu. <laughs> and I kept saying that I want people to learn the keyboard shortcut so they can hide the menu and just draw. Well, we need to have a button for that. So hide the menu. Another button to reset the drawing that will just be, we already have an eraser. So you can erase part of the drawing. That will be erasing everything in the drawing. That's relatively straightforward. And then this one is actually, this last one is actually a leftover. Um, it has been in the list of things to do for a while now. We want to save the drawing. This is currently an SVG. It would be also nice to save this as a transparent, uh, a PNG with transparent background. So I was just adding stuff to the backlog. And I guess I'm going to start with the keyboard shortcuts because we already have a strategy. We just need to make it slightly better. I think there are a few improvements we can make and then copy the approach for all the other shortcuts. So that's where we are going to start, but not, uh, but before I'm going to commit the changes to the bank, to the backlog. So let's see how we are handling this uh, right here. So right here is our color menu. That is the code that implements the first section of the menu, this section right here. So 
the way that this works is kind of a hack. We are writing our HTML. So this is an Electron app. It's in JavaScript and it needs to interpret some HTML. And the way that the HTML is generated is via JavaScript. So an Electron app is a JavaScript file, a main process that then starts some browser windows that are like your tabs on a browser. And I'm using the main process to generate the HTML. So while I'm doing that, and I'm using just tagged template literals in JavaScript to do that. So while I'm doing that, I can always escape from my HTML. Here I have some HTML going on. I can always escape back to JavaScript in the main process. And this gives me an opportunity to do Electron stuff, like adding stuff to a menu. So that's how we are doing the accelerator. And I'm doing it in this way, which can be kind of convoluted the first time you look at it. But I'm doing it this way because I can put in the same location in my source code the part that renders the menu and the part that reacts to keyboard shortcuts executed on the menu. So everything is co-located in a single place. You can imagine this same architecture as like object-oriented uh, coding, or if you're familiar with React, you can think of this like a component. It is not a React component. I'm not using React in this app, but you can think of it like that. I'm organizing and architecting the code that way by trying to co-locate features, like changing colors, that's one feature. So everything related to that, I want to bundle in a single place to the extent that that is feasible. So let's understand what is going on here. We have this menu menu variable, which is kind of a hack. So it seems like in the beginning of the app, in the electron land, I'm creating this variable. And then uh, over here on the color part of the application, I'm appending a menu item to this menu. So a menu item, as far as I understand, is like one of these, like window is a menu item, rum is a menu item. <laughs> so what I'm doing effectively is I'm creating, uh, I guess, 10 of these menu items, one for each color, which is completely crazy. It doesn't make any sense. So we are going to change the way that that works. And the menu is not even showing. We are just doing that for the keyboard shortcut. I think that is the, the most straightforward way of doing a keyboard shortcut like that in the architecture that we have with the constraints that I explained in the beginning of this stream. So instead of doing this whole shenanigans of adding one menu item for each keyboard shortcut I want, how about we have a single menu item and we just append to this sub menu stuff. I don't think that the menu item itself can have an accelerator. Oh, I guess it can. That's kind of interesting. But what if we just have a single menu item that has all these sub menu options? So a sub menu option would be like run task. That's a sub menu option. Run active file, another sub menu option. We could construct this list, this array of sub menu options, and then have a single menu item that will do everything. That's one way of doing this, and I think it will work. But before I do that, I want to experiment with just having more of the menu items with accelerators right on the menu item. Does that work? And then it doesn't have a submenu. The way to test this is really straightforward. I just have to try to change colors. And no, it does not work. The keyboard shortcuts do not fire. So I will need a submenu. Let me reverse these changes. And I am going to build this sub menu in here. And then later I will just append to the menu menu stuff. Hi DGQD sound. Hi, it's nice to have you here. It says, hi Leandro. On the topic of hotkeys, some mouse modifiers would be lovely too, like left drag to draw, shift and left drag to keep the line straight. That is a good point. Yeah, so I guess there are two 
related but not exactly the same thing here. One is mouse modifiers. And I like that idea. In fact, I am building this app to be used with one of those drawing tablets. Mine is on a drawer over there, but what the one I have is this one. Um, and I'm built, I actually have this one actually. Oh, it's neither of these actually. In any case, it's similar to these ones. So uh, this comes with a pen and the pen has, it acts as a cursor from the operating system's perspective. And when you put the pen on the tablet and drag, that's a left mouse drag and click, uh, dra uh, click and drag. But the pen has two buttons and you can configure what the buttons do. By default, one of the buttons is going to be a right click and drag and the other button is going to be a scroll. And because I'm designing with this tablet in mind, I think that I will have gestures like right click, maybe if you right click and drag that we will erase. And I'm planning on taking this drawing engine that we are building for this app and taking it in different directions. We already have one. I have implemented this experiment that allows you to draw on top of an OBS stream. So you, will, you are not drawing on top of your computer screen, uh, which has a limitation. If I draw on this corner, the drawing is behind my face. But if you draw on top of your OBS stream, the drawing would be on top of my face. In fact, I could go full screen and draw on the blank, uh, black canvas behind me, which could be sort of cool. So we already have that. And I'm planning on taking this drawing engine to different places, one of which is just an infinite canvas drawing with a bl uh, blank background. It's very simple stuff. But I think that the drag, the mid, the, the modifier on the pen that allows you to drag will allow you to drag uh, the it's a, a scroll actually it will scroll the drawing around so it will be an infinite canvas I don't think that having an infin infinite canvas really makes sense in the context of drawing on top of your computer screen but that's just something to keep in mind and I think that I will also make this available on the web so if you want to draw on top of any website then it would be nice to maybe have a browser extension or a bookmarklet to allow you to do that. And the cool thing about this version, the browser version, is that the drawing would follow you as you scroll. So you could draw on top of the tablets over here and scroll and your drawing would scroll with the web page. So I have all these different ideas and I think that having these modifiers on the pen makes sense like that. So that's idea number one. So right click to erase and scroll that is scroll to scroll <laughs> and your idea uh, which is related but not exactly the same which is like shift to keep line straight and we currently don't even have an option to keep the line straight, but we could have one. So it's here in the backlog and keep the suggestions coming. I, I love your suggestions. So uh, let's get back to the shortcut situation here. Um, first, we are going to change the way that this one is working to make it slightly better. Let's not create as many menu items then I will do the change on all the other sections of the menu. Let's go. So instead of doing it like this, I'm going to define a variable. Let's see how the menu menu stuff is being used. Okay, so we start the variable in the top of the program. Then in the middle of the program, we append more and more of these menu items. And then at the end, we set the application menu. And that has to happen in this order because if you set application menu before you append, it doesn't work. We tried that last time. But what I'm gonna do instead is, um, I'll have something like 
keyboard shortcuts. That will be just a list. Simple stuff. You know what? Maybe not a list, but a map. Mapping the keyboard shortcuts to the functions that should be called. Let's see. Uh, let's take a brief look at how this could work. Yeah, so our uh, keyboard shortcut, well, we already call we are already calling this uh, shortcut and the shortcut variable here is this string that is the keyboard shortcut. So do I want to keep calling this shortcut? Maybe not. Or maybe we'll call this the short cuts. Let's go with that for now. So we are going to begin our program with uh, defining this list, this empty list of shortcuts, and then in the middle of the program, but you know what, the problem with the shortcuts is that you cannot have multiple shortcuts bound to the same key. So this is not going to be a list, it's going to be a map. The difference being that if you try to assign multiple um, keyboard shortcut, uh, the same keyboard shortcut to multiple things, uh, a map will not allow you to do that. It will actually overwrite the previous one with the new one. Minor point, but in any case, so we are going to say that the shortcuts, and we are going to set a keyboard shortcut that will be our shortcut variable, which is a string, this variable, and we'll map that to a function that will be, I guess, this function. And then this whole thing we can get rid of. That's That looks a lot better. So now I'll just paste the code that I cut a couple seconds ago so I don't lose it. But the way this reads now is in the beginning of the program, it says shortcuts is a new map, empty map. Then in the middle of our program, whenever we want to set a keyboard shortcut, we say shortcut set, and then we give it a string, and then we give it a function to call when that is executed. That looks nice to me. And then what do we do at the end when all of this is over? So when all of this Let's go to our menu, menu stuff. So after defining all the keyboard shortcuts, at this point in the program, we have already e executed the code that will generate the whole menu. So at this point, uh, our shortcuts map will be complete. So at this point, we can create a new menu. And we don't want to call it menu menu because the name is silly, but we are already calling this part of our app menu. So that is the browser window that renders our menu. It's called menu, and I want to call it menu. I think it makes sense. So I need to rename this. Um, so how about I rename it to shortcuts menu? That is representative of what it is. So in the shortcuts menu, I think that I can create a, since at this point in the program, I have all my keyboard shortcuts in my shortcuts map, I don't think I need to go through this append stuff. I think that in the creation of the menu, I can pass in some variables that will, or pass in some values that will determine what the menu should look like. But I forget, so let's go to the Electron Docs and take a look. Oh, these docs are new. They don't look the same. We used to use these docs But this looks nice. This, uh, yeah, it's using DocuSaros like many uh, tools these days. So yeah, this is looking different. I wonder if they just put the old content in the new style or if they reworked the content as well. I was not 100% happy with the Electron Docs, so maybe that is better. Uh, so we are searching for menu Mm. 
let's try again menu main process modules get started menu item see menu for examples i want to see examples this is examples all righty so our shortcuts variable looks a lot like this template in spirit it captures the same essence which is all the things that we want to show up in the menu and then they use the build from template and then they set application menu okay so we can do this in a single line check this out we can say menu set application menu this line and then we can say menu build from template and then this template will be something similar to this but we don't care about most of it we do need it to be a list it seems right this is a list then we need a label and a submenu we learned that much from here that is necessary so we'll have a label that will be shortcuts and i think that this these labels they will not show up in the app we know that because the app doesn't have a menu like this but i think that this menu could still be heard by screen readers and usually i would worry about this but in this context i don't think it makes sense because people who can uh, people who need to use screen readers are probably not interested in a drawing app i may be wrong here i don't know maybe the person um, is going to interact with the tablet in some other way that I don't anticipate. I don't know. Maybe we'll have to fix this in the future. But as far as I can tell, this will never be uh, seen. So it doesn't matter what we put here. And GeForce Beats says hi. Hi, GeForce Beats. It's nice to have you here. Um, okay, so we have a label. We need a sub menu. And our sub menu is also a list. And there something is wrong about this. Oh yeah, I forgot to put curly braces around this. It's better now. And in our sub menu, we will want to have a bunch of these. So let's iterate over our map. So I guess we don't need to explicitly say list here. What we are gonna say is shortcuts. And then this is a map, so we can say entries and what entries gives me is an iterator and I cannot call map on an iterator but I can turn the inter iterator into a list which I can then map over this iterator dot uh, this iterator will generate a list of pairs each of the elements in the list is going to be a pair this pair is going to be the key and the value key and the value so pairs of key values key value just like that and our key is our shortcut or as they call it the accelerator and the value will be the click method so now we can just map over and return an object that looks like this so we need it needs a label and I guess I'll label it shortcut and then I will literally place the accelerator in there and then the click I'll just pass through so we have a label oh and I accelerator I'll just pass through as well so what we are doing here is we have this shortcuts map mapping our accelerators to click functions we are turning the map into a list by doing this so entries is going to return an iterator and with this operator we turn that iterator into a list it's just a bunch of data structure transformations that's going on here then we map over this list. The intent is that we want to generate a list. 
or as we would call in JavaScript, an array. And once you have the array, you can map over that array. So we already have an array. It's already the right data type. But we need to map over it so that our keys, our accelerators, and our clicks are producing objects of this shape with the label, the accelerator, and the click. And this replaces all of that. But my keyboard shortcuts should still be working. And they are. Excellent. Let's review what we have. So we, we are calling these shortcuts. And I think we need to be more mindful of this language because in Electrum, I think they're called accelerators. Well, we'll think about this in a moment. But we removed this line. Well, we changed it. We are accumulating things on the shortcuts map. And then we are appending stuff to the shortcuts map. And then we are uh, building the menu in a single step with this single line of code. It's actually like five to 10 lines of code, but it's in spirit a single statement. Okay. Now I said that I wanted to rename some things. I want to get the language straight here. In particular, what bothers me is how we have this shortcuts variable, but then this line really bothers me because a shortcut what is it? Is it the string that is, I guess, the accelerator? That's what Electron calls it. I am calling it the accelerator right here. So why am I calling it an, a shortcut over there? I want to get this language straight. So I guess the language is going to be a shortcut is a mapping between an accelerator and a click function. So this shortcuts map is using the right language but this is not using the right language. So I'm going to do a search and replace for shortcut to... Oh, that's interesting. So Electron has this concept of accelerators in menu items. Oh, and look at that. Because we are building the menu in a single step, we don't need to explicitly mention menu items. So we can get rid of that import. But as I was saying, Electron has this concept of a menu, and we are using the accelerators in the menu to do our keyboard shortcuts, but it also has the concept of a global shortcut. So let's see what language is used on this little guy. So a global shortcut is registering an accelerator and mapping that to a callback. So accelerator is what we call these strings that represent the thing you have to type in the keyboard. So we are going to follow that language. Yeah, we even have an instance of that right here, accelerator mapping to blah, blah, blah. Oh, and we already have another one of these guys uh, built from template situations. We defined one here. We had another one here for the menu lat that shows up. The menu icon. So yeah. Let's go over the code and change some instances, but not all of them. Some instances of shortcut to accelerator. So this is not gonna change, that is not gonna change. Fix keyboard shortcuts by forwarding the keyboard events to the menu window. We are doing exactly that, so we can remove that. Then all these shortcuts are now going to be accelerators. But not that one. This one, yes. This one, yes, as well. And then most of the following ones. Okay. Not that one. Um, 
IDQD sound says it's really tough overall to come up with a solid naming convention. Yes, um, there is this thing that everyone says that I don't remember who said it first, but everyone repeats it. There are, are the, the two hardest problems in computer science is naming things and caching validation. And there the joke continues. The only three hard things about computer science are naming things, caching validations, and off by one errors. Well, I guess the joke should be, there are only two hard things in computer science, caching validation, naming things, and off by one errors. <laughs> I don't find that amusing. No, sir. So, uh, label is going to be shortcuts that's all right but our variable oh it is called shortcuts and this is a shortcut and then everything else is just in comments i think i can skip over all that yeah so let's see if i still have everything working okay um yeah and keyboard shortcuts work great let's commit this change Oh, I need to close the app. <laughs> the cool thing about <laughs> uh, the cool thing about people who are getting into a community like you are getting into the community is that even the jokes that are no longer funny are funny to you. I I'm glad that you find that amusing. <laughs> and now you are one of us. You can spread the joke. I'm going to review this change carefully because I did a global uh, renaming thing here and I may have renamed something that I don't want to rename. So I'm going to just quickly glance at everything. Um, that sounds right. Do you want to follow up for the joke? You can tell the joke in binary. <laughs> Some people do that. Some people say there are only 10 hard things in computer science, or maybe 11. Here is a good joke. There are only 11 hard things in computer science. <laughs> Naming things, caching validation, um, counting in binary, and off by one mistakes. <laughs> See, because 11 isn't the number three in binary. Get that? Okay, GeForce Beat says, I always forget to commit stuff. <laughs> I need to get into the habit of committing more. I usually commit when I'm about to do so either because I completed something kind of risky, like I just completed something risky now, or because I am about to do something that I consider risky or experimental. I want to see if something will work out. In that case, I commit so I can revert easily. But I am not too careful with my commit messages. You probably have noticed by now that my commit messages are always just a blank space. And that's because I am experimenting with the project overall. So I don't really carefully craft all my commit messages and explain everything I did. That's just, I'm using Git as a safe state. So if programming is a game, this is my memory card. Okay, so all that looks good. I like these changes, I'm going to keep them. I'm also going to review all the leftovers, all the occurrences of shortcut need to make sense. Okay, and they do. All right, so with that in place, I think we nailed the structure of how we want to do keyboard shortcuts. We want to have a map, we want to have accelerators mapping to callbacks. So let's apply this change for the rest of the shortcuts. So we already have this one for the callers, and what we want is something very similar to this for hmm, it's kind of silly the way I'm doing this. I'm interested in in, in seeing if I am so okay, let's take a step back and explain what I'm thinking about. The way that this works is I'm escaping from my HTML back into my electron land to do the setting of the keyboard shortcut. The problem is that 
The way I'm doing this is going to return void. I'm using a function that I, I define the function, I immediately call the function, and this is going to return um, null or void or undefined. I think it's going to return undefined. So let's try this out. If I have a function that I immediately call, it returns undefined. And I am interpolating that into the string that will become my HTML. My HTML is just a series of strings concatenated. So I think that this is producing undefined and undefined becomes part of my HTML, like an attribute on the input is undefined, literally. So I'm going to put this here to prove that I'm right, because when I run the app now, you will be able to see undefined written on the screen several times, <laughs> which is absolutely silly. So instead of doing that, I will return an empty HTML and now this will not show undefined on the screen anymore, which is less silly. And then I'm going to put this back in place. That's where I really want this code to show up. It kind of reads like an attribute on the HTML, but not really, it's just a, this fancy thing I'm doing in Electron. Now that I have that, that doesn't change much, just adds a single line, but I'm going to commit it because I am about to do something risky, which is to apply this same change to the all, all the other sections of the menu. And I wonder if I made the exact same mistake in other places, so I'm going to search for this string that will only occur in immediately invoked functions like that. I'm going to look for all of them and see if there is a mistake anywhere else. So here I'm returning something, returning something there. I actually noticed this problem before because I'm returning something here, which is empty HTML. Here I'm returning something and that is just commented out. So that's perfect. Let's go back to shortcuts. Copy this block and go, uh, uh, go to our next, next section. So when we have that here, I guess I will replace that with this. And then I don't carry select for color, I do that with a stroke width. Just like that, the keyboard shortcuts for the stroke width should be working, and they are. Now let's continue to the tool. So here we replace that, and here we say tool. And just like that, the keyboard shortcuts for the tools should be working. And they are. Now let's move on to our fades. And you can start to see a similarity between all these sections. When we did some refactoring, we tried to extract some of the repetition in a few places, but I don't think I'm ready to extract the repetition everywhere because I do see some things that are fundamentally different, like the way we are rendering this icon is fundamentally different. So I don't think I'm ready to extract the commonalities between this. I think this is incidental repetition and I'm happy with incidental repetition. Now let's try the fades. The fades are working. And finally, we have this last section that is not really uh, working. It has never worked, not really. So we'll need to work on that separately. You can tell that it has never worked because it's showing the keyboard shortcuts that are the same as the ones above. And this is just a question mark. I don't know what to use there. So that is definitely incorrect. That has never worked. Let's commit what we did because what we did fixed a bunch of things. And I think that I should not have any instances of mouse trap anymore because I'm handling the events in this other way. So. I can just remove Mousetrap from the project. Mousetrap was this library we were using. We are not using anymore. We were using to handle keyboard shortcuts, but now we are using Electron itself to do that. So we can remove Mousetrap. 
Oops. Mouse trap. Excellent. Let's work on the keyboard. No, let's work on the keyboard shortcuts for the last section of the menu. So what happens when a well, first of all, what uh, keyboard shortcuts do I want to assign to this? These are not different drawing modes, not really. This is, I am, when I say that it's not really drawing modes, I mean it's not a different stroke width. It's not going to affect the way you draw. It's going to affect the mode, in, the mode of operation of the app itself as an entire app. So, um, which keyboard shortcuts do we want to assign here? Mm, maybe we want some modifiers, like Command something. Oh, that reminds me, Command Z, we definitely want to have undo redo support that is super important and i'm going to commit just this change see it doesn't hurt a commit is easy it's, it's fast okay so last section now we are pulling back from the nitty-gritty of how we define keyboard shortcuts and we are back in design mode what keyboard shortcut do we want here and the problem is that I expect to see some more of these guys. Not only these different two modes, but also close the drawing screen, close the whole app, hide the menu. So I already see some more of these showing up. Just using single letters, I don't think we'll cut it. I think I know a keyboard shortcut that I want. The one to hide the whole app and just throw you back into regular whatever app you are doing you're using i think that needs to be escape so let's see if we can bind that and currently it says question mark but it doesn't really even work so what we are doing here is We are saying that when you click on the button, you are going to send a message, you are going to send an event to the main process. So from the browser window that is our menu, it sends an event to the main process. And the main process will handle that event by hiding the drawing window. What I want is to have a shortcut that will be an accelerator uh, escape in particular that's what i want and it will do exactly the same thing so maybe i could just copy and paste this line to begin with we s we'll see how that will work so you can draw hit escape and then i'm back into editing mode it's great but I don't want this line to be copied. I want to be, I want to extract this somehow. One way to extract this would be to send this event. So I could say IPC main send. Uh, no, unfortunately, I don't think I can trigger an event from there. Maybe emit. Event string hide. Awesome, that works. So I define what the hiding is in a single place, and then over here I define the keyboard shortcut for it. 
and then I define how the click of the button handles that for me. Excellent. There's something else that bothers me. When I put my cursor on top of the letter C, for instance, you don't see the background highlight on this guy. But if you put your cursor on the question mark, you do see the background highlight on this one. I want to figure out why that is happening and I don't want that to happen. But before that, I will commit this. Why is that happening? That's a good place to start. This looks very similar to what we have over here. So it's not only the one above that doesn't exhibit that behavior, even the one on the side, this one, I don't see the background highlight when my cursor is on top of the X. So this is the one right before and it doesn't behave the same way. Why? Let's look at the two side by side or top down. So this is exactly the same and then the input Uh, there is an input that is hidden and in this one there is a button. Well, actually there is a uh, a radio that is hidden on this one. There is an input that is hidden on this one and in this one there is nothing. The equivalence is there is nothing there. Then here there is a div which is a section item icon and here there is a button there is a section item icon and then there is the accelerator right below so as far as I understand the cursor is not on top of the button and as far as I remember it's the section item icon which has the background it is so for some reason the browser thinks that when I have my cursor on top of the question mark my cursor is on top of this button it is not well first of all I don't think it really makes sense to have this as a label maybe that will help things because this is not an input, it's a button, so it doesn't really make sense to have a label. That's all right. In fact, I'm kind of bothered by the fact that you can click on the letters to change the options. What bothers me about this is that if I want that to be the case, I also want this one to be the case, right? I want the question mark here to be part of the button. Okay, let's be consistent in this way. We could be consistent by making the letters not work on the others one, other ones, or we could make the accelerator show up in the button in this case. So I guess the button itself is the section icon and this is a div in the button and I guess the on click stuff will go on the button did I mess something up it is refusing to yes I messed something it was refusing to reformat my code that's because I got these two reversed. That's better now. Okay. Let's see what this looks like. Okay, so it's not having that weird behavior. My cursor is on top of the question mark. I don't see the highlight. That's perfect. But if I click on the question mark, it works. So now the behavior is consistent. I like the way that this looks now. I just need to indent this because my formatter is incapable of indenting my inline JavaScript like that. I'm good to go. 
so this is now escape and I can draw this how do I even show this to the user there is a keyboard uh, there is a symbol for that it's this symbol right here I don't know if most people know this symbol but I'm gonna go with it and then to type this symbol I have two options one is to literally type this as Unicode there is this section here of the input that gives me that symbol and let's see how this looks but another option is to try to come up with an icon from my icon set that will be this that looks nice actually but let's look at font awesome and go to their free icons yep they don't have an icon for that so this is our best option oh that's still running then these two are not working we need to think about what we want them to be so maybe if escape is the thing that hides your window what if backtick is the thing that makes the window click through because on the US keyboard at least I'm designing this for the US keyboard the backtick is right below the escape key yeah let's do that so let's say that this is a backtick and I have to escape the backtick because of the way I'm doing HTML here oh and that breaks syntax highlighting that's unfortunate what if I do something silly and escape the JavaScript just to write the backtick then the syntax highlighter likes this better and I of course need to assign this to a keyboard shortcut so I think I will do something similar to what we have here where I do this and I change this JavaScript to be here and I send the name off and the value is my true value and I guess I would just do the similar thing on the other one as well since it's so near and so easy to just copy and paste so one change of this one will be false or actually I don't think I need to have this as strings anymore I will of course also need to go to where I'm handling this event which is right above excellent and I can just say it like that because now that I'm sending from Electron to Electron oh no 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 that doesn't make sense because I'm still sending that from the IPC renderer yeah so let me undo and have it like that but of course I'm still setting scape 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 that doesn't make sense so I need to come up with the different ones so this one that hides will be backtick and the one that shows again that's kind of tricky because your focus is now on the window behind so there is nothing I can do to regain that uh, to to get that keyboard event except for the global keyboard event so maybe this one is not as easy yeah maybe I will not have the uh, keyboard accelerator for this at all because it doesn't make sense to have one and then in that case I can simplify this definition remove this thing we just added and then our code is back to where it started I can tell that because there is no blue highlight here on the left 
Let's see if this is working, the back tick. It is not. Maybe that's not how you write an accelerator for electrons. So let's see. Escape and let's see what is the punctuation for backtick. There isn't one. It says that it should be just a backtick. It's not. It didn't work. And why do I have this hide twice? Doesn't make sense. It's already here. Oh, and there is another problem with this. Well, first of all, I need to get back my back tick there to remind myself that this is not working, but also um, the problem with this, the way I'm doing this is that the menu will not show the difference because I am kind of doing the thing I was doing before. I copy and pasted the implementation. I shouldn't do that. What you should is to Yeah, this is doing it the wrong way as well. I should not emit an event. I need that to go to the menu, so I need to click on this button. That's what I want to do. I want to click on this button. So I guess I will need to give this a special class. I'll call this hide. Then I will do something similar to what we have above, like this. Then we'll carry selector for our hide button and click on it. And I will do something similar over here. Does that make sense? The problem here is that I want the menu to reflect the change. So if I just send an event to the main process that will do the thing, it will do the, the thing, but the menu will not reflect that. I won't see the change in the menu. And here I will have to call this with, I guess it will have a name like that and a value like this. So I select that and click on it. Okay, let's try this out. Escape should still be working even though I changed the way that I implemented it. It is working. And uh, the back tick is working as well. So I made some other mistake before, and I don't know what the mistake was, but if you hit back tick, you are back into this mode of operation where you can uh, interact with the application underneath. And you can always hit a global keyboard shortcut to get back. No, you will be able to, but you are not right now. Okay, so let's commit the changes that we have so far. All that makes sense. Um, there is something silly that bothers me. You know how when I hit back tick, so I, if I leave my cursor over here, hit back tick, I'm interacting with Visual Studio Code now, but the custom cursor is still on the screen. I would like that for I would like for that to be hidden. And at the same time, we may fix the problem of the custom cursor showing below the drawing. We are going to treat these uh, problems at once because they both have to do with the custom cursor. Um, well, the thing is, when I am about to hide the window, so when I am sending the hide event, When I'm receiving this hide event, when the drawing window is about to hide, well, not to hide, when when it's hidden, it's hidden. I'm thinking about this one. So when 
I am about to make the mouse events go through, make the window click through, and I'm about to do that. I am sending the menu some information to Yeah, I'm sending the menu some information to switch the menu option. I will also send to the drawing window. I will execute some JavaScript in there. And the JavaScript that I will execute in there will say document query selector of something hidden true. Probably that's what I need. Let's find what I want to hide. I think it will be called custom. It's not. So this is my this is my menu. Let's scroll up and find our drawing window. Here it is. Let's find our Oh, see, fix me. The cursor shows up below the drawing. There is our note. I remember leaving that note. So we have that here and then this is our custom cursor. This whole div. This is the start of the custom cursor. But it doesn't have a name and I need to select that. I need to be able to select that. So I will say class custom cursor or actually just cursor, right? The fact that it's custom is kind of there because I have a div that represents my cursor. So here I can just say and now I can draw something and when I hit back tick the custom cursor goes away. Oh no, it came back. Oh no. Um, why is that? Well. It seems like I am still receiving mouse events on my window before I click. After I click, yeah, it gets complicated. I need to explain what I'm doing in the keyboard for you to understand what's going on. Let me restart the app. It is very weird. I can draw something, whatever. When I hit back tick, my cursor goes away because I just wrote the code to do that. And my window is now clicked through. I just hit that ignore mouse event situation on Electron that makes my window click through. So my drawing window is now clicked through. And if I click, it's clicked through. I am interacting with Visual Studio Code underneath my drawing. Excellent. But let me draw something else hit backspace, the window is click through. If I click, I'm interacting with Visual Studio Code. But if I move, the cursor pops back up. And alternatively, if I have, I am in drawing mode, if I come to the menu and click and then drag out, if I click, I'm going to interact with Visual Studio Code. But if I move around, the mouse events are still going to my drawing window. That is silly. It shouldn't be that way, I don't think. I mean, if my window is clicked through for click events, why is it not clicked through for mouse move events? I mean, the name of the thing is ignore mouse moves. That's what it's called in Electrum. But it doesn't seem to ignore all mouse events, just key, uh, just click events. But we can work around that. I mean, I think we can. <laughs> we'll see. So. The way we are handling this mouse, the custom cursor situation here is, see how when we go over the menu, the cursor goes away, the custom cursor hides. We had to do that. It's not automatic. We had to code that. The way that this works is when we receive an event called mouse leave, we say that the thing is hidden. And then we need some way for the mouse to show up again. And the way we are doing that is a hack. 
Uh, it's a simple hack, but it's a hack because we have the, the hidden situation going on here. And then when you move, Yes, right there, move. So the way this works is when you leave the, the area, for instance, you are now on the menu, you left the area, you say this hidden true. But on mouse move, anytime you move, we say this hidden false. Well, because of this weird thing where Electron is sending the mouse move events, even though the window is supposedly ignoring mouse events, the way we have to do this instead, or at least one way, we'll see if this works. We'll do it like this. on mouse enter I guess this is the way that makes the most sense no not really I think that mouse enter and mouse leave should be together doesn't really matter it's not going to change the operation now i'm thinking about the human reading this what do they read they read that when the mouse enters you display when the mouse leaves you hide and when the mouse moves you do that i guess it makes sense in this order because the mouse is going to chronologically enter move and leave but the fact that it's a toggle between enter and leave hide and show i think it makes more sense to show the code to present the code to the reader this way so that's what i'm gonna do now we enter the menu leaving the drawing and come back and all that makes sense now let's see if i draw something and i hit back tick and move my cursor around you don't see a cursor moving you don't see a custom cursor moving also, you don't see any cursor moving, which is kind of silly. You have you have to press once for you to be able to see the cursor because the cursor is apparently still on my window. Yeah, that's kind of unfortunate. let's commit what we have i think there may be another solution for this which is to remove the focus from the drawing window when i am going to remove the when i said ignore mouse events i also remove the focus from my drawing window that may be a better solution but let's commit what we have over here so simple change over here and then over there we have that well at this point when I am about to set the ignore mouse events besides hiding the cursor I probably can say focus or the opposite of focus is blur and there is also a blur web view but I think I want blur this removes the focus from the window so now I will draw hit back tick and the same thing happens it seems like the cursor is still on my drawing window so the cursor is still hidden I could at that point show the cursor well let's try the other blur thing just for fun I don't think it will work but we have it so let's try it I draw back tick no cursor yeah I move around and I see no cursor except when I move into the menu bar. Then I see a cursor, which is like crazy. What's happening? I don't know. Uh, but, okay, so this blur didn't work, but maybe I can go to where I'm saying cursor none, 
is my drawing. This is absolutely ridiculous, but I can do that, I think. So when I say ignore mouse events, I can go to my drawing and besides hiding the cursor, my custom cursor, I can also select my drawing and I can say cursor equals default, which is the little arrow. Let's see if this works. So I can draw something, I hit back tick, and it doesn't work. Oh, okay, I, I wrote it wrong, I wrote it wrong. It's my fault this time. I forgot to say style. I'm changing the styles of this guy, so I should say style. I draw something, back tick, and I'm back with my cursor which is like an incorrect cursor for the application. Uh, it should be... Uh, a carrot like this. So the focus is not in Visual Studio Code, which is like the incorrect thing for me to do. Semantically, it's incorrect. But I think it's the best I can do. I can quickly Google this and see if something else shows up, but Electrum force blur window force mouse blur oh keep main window blur or ignore ignore mouse events on the book click Does this have to do with the order I am trying to hide after I tried to ignore mouse events? Should I do it the other way around, maybe? And this is just a wild guess, but... No, I don't see a carrot. I'm not interacting with Visual Studio Code. Well, I am if I click, but the wrong cursor is showing up. And what if... I use drawing blur and drawing blur web view. And that's the most I'm gonna try. No, no carriage. Doesn't work. Whatever. Let's see the changes we have. I don't think we care about any of them. Oh, we care about some of them. We want. No, we don't want to set the cursor. I don't want to do that. Because then I will have to remember to unset that. I think I can do this in a different way. Now that I know that this kind of works. Let's undo the changes. So now I'm back into the state where if I hit back tick, I don't see any cursor at all. I have to click. This is such a minor usability point, but I'm giving it some love. So when I am about to hide Oh, but I do it in different places. I hide on mouse leave I hide and also when I am doing the ignore mouse events stuff I hide there as well
yeah so I hide the cursor here and I hide the cursor there two places where I hide the cursor and we need to do the bookkeeping of come up uh, of return the other cursor the default cursor to you when I do that in two places now I could observe the changes to the hidden property on this guy and then I would change that accordingly IDTQD sound says it is important in my opinion it's this kind of stuff that makes it more usable than the competition well I agree <laughs> that's why I'm thinking about this so hard yeah um... let's do it like this when I hide the cursor I am going to change what property this property from the drawing now where do I want to do this I, where do I want to write this code I can write this code over here which is the cursor none situation the default cursor or I can do it over here on my custom cursor guess I will do it over here and what I need is a mutation observer that will observe itself and change the parents cursor BAM let's do this I will create a new mutation observer that will I forget the API for mutation observer every time I try to use it I don't use it that often that's probably why so it's called observe that's a good name and I want to observe this and I want to observe particular events of attributes and I can pass a filter to only observe the hidden property which is like silly it's mostly for performance so you probably wouldn't bother with this in this scenario the performance of this is not going to be a bottleneck but for the purpose of like readability I want you to know which attribute I'm looking for in this mutation observer so I'm going to provide an attribute filter and in this attribute filter an array of specified attribute names to be monitored so it needs to be an array and not a function and it will be an array of hidden alrighty so what does this mutation observer do well it does this dot closest drawing style cursor and if this hidden if this is hidden then show the default otherwise don't show anything let's see so the app starts with the custom cursor I move it around I hit back tick I'm back to my default cursor and then I interact with this studio code I do my happy thing I go back into drawing mode and I have my custom cursor and if I move it over here the custom cursor goes away I move it over there the custom cursor goes back I hit back tick and I have a cursor over there nailed it not happy with the solution but mutation observer to the rescue I want to make a philosophical point about this why do I use a mutation observer here well because there are multiple places where I am hiding this cur this cursor but more importantly and I could just say a line that's similar to this in multiple places a line that is similar to this line in multiple places and that would work exactly the same but I want my DOM to be the source of truth that is fundamental tenet about the way I'm building this app in fact that's why I came up with my own drawing engine instead of just using something more mature like paper.js 
Paper.js has its internal data structures to represent the drawing and then uses an HTML5 canvas to just show this stuff to the user. And I wanted the DOM to be the source of truth because it's conceptually cleaner. There are no two layers, the real representation and then the canvas. No, it's just a single thing. An SVG is the drawing and it is the representation and it is the thing that, man that I manipulate in the drawing engine. It is the thing that we are going to later be able to save. It is just the thing. SVG, the DOM, is the thing. And why does Paper.js do the thing the way that it does? Well, because they say on their website, because it's slower. And many people say that, oh, React has a virtual DOM because it's slow to do DOM operations. Well, I want to prove otherwise. It's kind, it, it probably is slower in some contexts, but it can be as fast as a virtual DOM or it can be as fast as Paper.js in particular scenarios like this one. I want, I'm advocating for the DOM, single source of truth, single place to change things. I find that conceptually cleaner and look at the performance of this app, it's not bad. I am changing the DOM here um, as you draw. I am appending stuff to the path that is the SVG path. And it doesn't look bad. I mean, of course, if I was going to do thousands or millions of these lines on a very slow computer, probably better idea to use Paper.js, maybe. Maybe a better idea to use Select, uh, React. I don't know. But the DOM can get you far. And that's the point I want to make. The DOM can get you far. And with that thought, I think that we are going to wrap up. Um, so we fixed the rest of this, the shortcuts. Not all of them, but we fixed many of them. And then let's prioritize for what we are going to do on Thursday. And then I'm going to talk about the schedule and why I'm going to return this on Thursday. So there are some low hanging fruits. Undo redo is going to be hard. Mouse modifiers, not exactly hard, but it's a matter of design. Custom cursor is behind the drawing. That I think I know the solution already and I should have done it today if I had the time, but let's do it first on Thursday. Section headings is going to be easy and fun and quit button on the menu. That's going to be straightforward. It's mostly a matter of design. Designing so it looks good is going to be hard. Hide menu, reset drawing, all of those are relatively straightforward. I think I'm going to do something like this order. We'll see. We'll keep changing the, the backlog as we go. And there you go. You can follow the link in the description to go to the repository. Thank you very much for all of you who joined me today in the chat and watching and giving you all uh, your great suggestions. Thank you for supporting me on PayPal and Patreon. Thank you for subscribing to the channel. And the schedule is... Tomorrow, I am over at Aria's channel, IDDQD Sound, and we are going to be talking about JS effects, probably continuing our equalizer, but I had to leave early on our last stream, so I don't know if he finished it already. We'll see. We'll do something fun related to programming for audio effects or for automating things in Reaper. We'll see tomorrow over at IDDQD. Yeah, see you tomorrow. And on Wednesday, Aria will be over here and we'll be recording an acoustic guitar for a song that I wrote and I was supposed to do that last Wednesday I couldn't but on good news baby is okay he is not 100% but he's getting better and on Wednesday I will be able to record that acoustic guitar yeah so thank you all for being here I see you tomorrow over at IDUKD Sound